guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are finally tackling our pantry in our new house. This has been something that I've been talking about and putting off ever since moving in just because it is a bit of a bigger project that's not just like, you know, decanting things and making it look nice, but also I am going to be painting in here. We're adding new shelving and then of course like organizing everything and just making it very functional. So before we jump into it, I'm gonna turn you around and show you kind of what we're starting with and then also share what my plans are for this space and then we'll get into it. I wanna hear you say it. All right, so before I show you the pantry, this is our kitchen and it walks into this butler pantry area. But when you turn right, you go into our pantry. First of all, the lighting in this pantry is not very great and you can see like how it looks very yellow. It's a little bit worse on camera, I feel, but it's just like very yellowy, orangey in here. And then this is what you have in the pantry. So you have these shelves, they're not super deep, but I think that's actually, kind of a good thing because then you have to rotate through your food as opposed to things getting stuck in the back. But then up here, the ceilings are really tall in here and it's just a total waste of space. So we are going to be adding two shelves up here, painting the entire pantry. And then also in here, there's like no lighting in this area, so it's very dark, but this is just under the stairs. And so I'm going to just paint in here. And then we got like a puck light that's battery operated so we can go ahead and just add that in for more lighting. So there's a lot of potential because it is like a really good sized pantry but it's a little bit awkward and not just like the best use of space. So the first thing that I want to do in here is add in the shelves and then start painting. But before we can do any of that, I need to take everything out and make sure that it's all clean. So we're starting with a clean and empty space and then we will start adding in the shelving. So of course I am starting out by taking every single thing out of the pantry and the reason that I do this whenever I do any type of pantry makeover no matter the scale that I'm doing is for several reasons. One, you can take inventory and you can kind of start making a note of what you have and also start making a mental note of how you're planning to actually organize everything. The second reason is just to go through the items and then anything that you know you don't use you can go ahead and donate that and also you can take note of any expiration dates and anything that has expired you can go ahead and toss that and speaking of expiration dates I have found some really really expired food in the past I would love if you would comment down below what is the most expired food you have ever seen whether it was in your own kitchen or someone you know I know in the past we've found things that are like eight years expired which is insane but sometimes those things just kind of sneak past us so let me know what is the most expired food you have ever seen in a pantry and the third reason is that then you will have a clean slate and you can go Go ahead and clean all of the shelves, clean the flooring, just make sure that you are starting out with a nice fresh space. And the final reason that I do this is that as you are taking everything out, you can kind of start to sort everything on your countertops and put them in certain piles and that way you can kind of sort it out on the counter and it just makes organization a little bit easier when you have everything kind of sorted out already. So you'll end up seeing that I have all of the cans in one section, I have all my baking items in one section, all of our breakfast foods in one section different like snack foods in another section and so on and so forth. And so doing all of that just gives me a little extra hand when I go to organize everything.
Okay, so finally I have everything all emptied, all the shelves wiped down, the floor nice and clean. So Kyle is <laughs> gathering his tools right now and then he's gonna start measuring because we're just going to basically do more shelves that will be just like these except higher up. And those are not gonna be like practical for everyday use. So my thought with that is to be able to put like extra items up there to kind of rotate through. So like for example, when you go to Costco and we get the big boxes of like oatmeal or cans or whatever, and we don't really need to cycle through them yet, but they're kind of on backup, then we can actually just put those items up there. That's my plan. We'll see if it changes, but I definitely want to be able to utilize the space up here just because there is so much. And I feel like right now it's absolutely wasted space. So anyway, he's gonna get all his tools and start measuring for how he needs to cut the shelving. So of course, when you were doing a pantry makeover, you're always thinking about adding new bins and new containers and labels and things like that. But some things that we don't always think about that are totally doable are adding some new shelving, adding more lighting, painting things. Those things can make such a drastic difference, sometimes even more than the actual organization itself. And it can definitely be easy to get overwhelmed with it, but I guarantee that if you can just stay persistent with it, you can accomplish it. It definitely is doable. So for these shelves, all we did was measure these small pieces of wood and then cut them down to size and drilled them into studs for support. And then we measured the top board and attached it from the top. And it doesn't look really great right in the beginning, but once we puttied everything, caulked it, and also painted it, you could not tell the difference between the new shelves and the ones that were here ever since the house was built. And another thing that I did want to measure Mention. I won't be sharing that in this video, but if you have wire shelves, I know a lot of pantries have wire shelving and I actually shared a hack for that in a different pantry makeover video. It was at my sister's house within the last year or so, so I will have that video linked up above for you guys right here. And then that video is also in my home makeovers playlist, which is always linked down in the description box. So you can go ahead and check that out if you have not already. But we ended up spending just a couple of dollars and really transformed her wire shelving into like a faux wood shelf and it made it really Way more practical and it also looked way more high-end so if you have not seen that hack before go ahead and check out that video it will be such a game changer if you have wire shelving in your pantry
Alright, we have all of the shelves, or both of the shelves, I guess, built and put in. We just got them all caulked and everything. They don't look super pretty right now because you can see like all the caulking, and they're obviously a different color. But now we are to the point that we are going to start painting. And now we are going to use the same color that we used in the boys room, which is basically like a soft white, like an off white. It is Sherwin Williams <laughs> Alabaster, I believe. And that's the one that we're gonna end up using on all the walls and all the shelves in here. There is only this one light up here and it does not really give off a great hue, I guess, in here. And also, like I said earlier, the color in here is like very yellowy orange. I feel like it's looking pretty okay, but it's not this color. It usually looks like very orangey in here. So once we get this all painted, it's just gonna be the perfect like backdrop to all the organization and just function that we're gonna add into the space. And especially with it being like in a hallway with no natural lighting in here really, it's just gonna make it really bright and airy, I feel. And it will also make it feel a little bit bigger. So all those things are definitely a plus, but now we're just kind of waiting for the coke to dry and then we're gonna start painting. I have been watching some professional painting videos, just like kind of trying to figure out their techniques. I'm obviously not a professional painter, but I'm gonna try some of their techniques. I don't really know this is the best space to do it in because usually they do it in like big rooms, but I'm gonna do my best. So I'm actually not going to tape out the room or tape off the trim. I'm just going to trim everything out first with an angled paintbrush that I've seen them use on all of those videos. <laughs> I'm like basically like professional now because I've watched a lot of videos, but I'm just gonna kind of like go along the trim and trim things out with a paintbrush. And then once I get that done, then I'm gonna roll the walls. And I also have a foam brush roller that I'm going to roll like all the shelves. So we're gonna try this and see how it works. I don't know, I've learned some little tips like just from watching a lot of them don't even have like voiceovers or talking on them. So I'm just kind of gathering what I can, but anyway, let's get into painting. I have to say it has been so incredibly neat just to see this home already transforming. I know we have been here for a while already. It's already been, I think, almost two months, maybe not quite two months, but we have just been busy doing one thing after another, getting settled and then doing little transformations like this and everything is kind of coming together and it's just made such a big difference. So I've loved sharing that with you guys. But we are actually going to be starting on our bedroom this next week, so stay tuned for that video. I think we're going to be painting in there, giving it a little bit of a refresh. Not like a full-on makeover, but definitely making it better than it's been. And we also have lots of new furniture pieces that we have to put together. My sister and I recently went to Ikea, so we have that vlog that's going to be coming out over on our vlog channel. So we just have so, so much more to share with you guys. So definitely stay tuned for all of that. Okay. 
Okay, so this is already way more work than I was like anticipating it being. And I do still have to do more layers over here, but you can already see the drastic difference. This side is not painted. It's like a bit more yellowy, orangey kind of. And then this is just a bright white. I think it's gonna look so great. Um, and it will obviously not be super stark because we're gonna have lots of other, like lots of things to organize in here and like browns and things that will just like warm it up in here, but it will be a great base color just having this nice and white. I'm gonna keep going at this, but I just kinda wanted to show you a little progress photo. That one, that bottom shelf, you can see I did another coat on that, so that's closer to what it's gonna look like, but I cannot wait to get all finished with this. It looks so good. Nothing out there could ever stop me From chasing after the way you la 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 love me Keeping me up to cups of coffee Baby, you make me feel so la 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 lovely I keep on running, no, I shouldn't want it uh -huh, uh -huh. I keep on running right until you're done I can't get you off my mind So sweet, yeah, I need it from you So one of the techniques that I was talking about that I saw on like the professional painters videos are this little W technique and that's where I see them paint a W on the wall immediately after dipping the paint in the paint roller and I was kind of curious like why they kept doing that in the videos and I ended up realizing I think it's to distribute the paint across the wall and then as you go back over in up and down motions you can kind of grab a little bit of that extra paint that you get from your first roll onto the wall. I don't know if that even makes sense but it ended up working out really well. So I didn't get a great chance to try that all out in this video just because this is a pretty small space. But when we paint our bedroom next week, I'm definitely going to use the same technique and I will show it a little bit better. All right, it is the next day and we are just <laughs> living in a little bit of a construction zone. We have like all of the food out everywhere. Um, but I want to show you something. We had to disconnect the light so there's no light in here right now but we disconnected the light to paint the ceiling just because the ceiling was painted the same color as the walls and so we had to go ahead and do that i already love it so much it's like so bright and just clean and fresh in here but um this was the light that was in here before it was just like one of these lights and I was hoping to change it out for something a little different. So earlier today we grabbed, we found like the perfect light. I love it for the pantry. It has like natural boho vibes. I love it so much. And I feel like it'll fit really well in the pantry. So that one was from Lowe's, but Kyle is going to just put that new light up. And then I do have some like wall shelves that I want to put up over here. And then once we're done with that, then we'll start actually organizing the pantry. I guess I was gonna say, I'll turn you around and show you how the shelves look, but we really can't do that until we get a light in there. So we'll get the light in first, then I'll show you the shelves, then we'll start working on everything else. I deleted all the pictures of you I had on my Instagram. Can't see it in my dreams, I hold you closest like I wish I can It's late at night, I know you're gone And I can't sleep cause you moved on I wish I tried, but you're always someone else tonight oh, Why do we end up broken hearts?
channels, but my mind is watching slideshows of our memories. All right, now we have the lights installed. So you can see that pendant light. I love it so much. It's so, I don't know, it just adds like a lot of warmth in here already. It is making this way brighter than it was. So you can kind of see like, I feel like it almost looks a little orangey in there right now, but it is white. But this is what I wanted because this like in person, it looks really nice. It just almost looks like a little bit of a cream color, even though it is the off-white. And then over here in the nook there, this is just like the stairway going upstairs. And so there was no lights in here normally and it was really dark over here. So now we have this piece that actually is motion detected. So whenever like you reach in, it's definitely a more harsh light over here. Um, but it's really nice because it just sticks on. It's just a little puck light and it makes this very functional. Like you can see everything over here. So we have our two lights over here. I'm gonna actually see if Kyle can find one that's like a little bit warmer because that is like very stark. But either way, this is gonna be like where a majority of our stuff is. And then I think I'm gonna make this area over here more like kid friendly items so that they can just come because it's short obviously and they can just easily grab their stuff. But anyway, we have the lighting set up. So now my plan is to get all of the cans off of the shelves and put the cans on the wall. So I have a can organizer. I've used this in my sister's pantry, one of my friend's pantries. It's just amazing. So we're just gonna put, I think two of them on this wall right here. And then I'll be able to put our, pan our cans here and then everything else can be on the shelf. So let's go ahead and grab the can organizer. So now we have everything painted, the lighting in, and we have added in these extra shelving units. I love these so much. It's great because like you can get your cans in a single file right here. It only takes wall space. So if you have any extra wall space in your pantry, this is gonna be a great option. Also, if your pantry door opens outwards, you can put this um, like on the interior door of your pantry and you won't see it from the outside, but you have all of that storage. You can either hang it on your door if you're renting or if you um, own your home or you just want it to be more permanent and you're allowed to do that, you can go ahead and just screw it in like I did on my friend's pantry door over the last several months, but it really maximizes your space and it's around, I think 30 or $35. So you really get a lot for your money and it just like almost doubles your space. So. Definitely recommend that, but now that we have that done, we are going to start actually bringing some things into the pantry, some of the new organizing solutions that I have in here, kind of seeing how they're gonna fit and how I'm planning to set everything up in here, and then we'll start putting everything in the containers and making some labels. Close 
the door Now you're calling me But I don't need you anymore Yeah I already know better 24k got nothing on me So I wanted to share where I got all of my containers from So most of these containers and bins Are either from Home Goods or TJ Maxx Which I would definitely recommend checking out Just because you're going to get a lot for your money there And then the other ones that I used Came from Walmart or Amazon So I will have all of those ones linked down below but I would definitely suggest shopping around shop sales and also shop over time. I have been kind of collecting these for the past few months and it really makes it a lot nicer on the budget just to kind of spread things out. So I would definitely suggest doing all of those things. And then I also just wanted to point out how much food you really can store on the wall shelves. And normally that is completely wasted space, whether it's on your wall or the back of your door. So if you have a space that you could use one of these on, I would highly recommend it. I love these things so much. So as I was washing out all the containers just to get them nice and clean, I started pulling the stickers off of some of them. And one thing that I wanted to share is a tip on how to get this extra residue off of your containers. So if you just grab some lemon essential oil or really any citrus oil and go ahead and drop a few drops onto the extra residue and then just use a sponge and start kind of scrubbing at it, it will end up really just disintegrating that extra residue and it will end up making it look perfectly clean. Everything is taking so much longer than we had anticipated, which is always the case. That's just always how it goes. But we have to do dinner and I'm starting to lose light right now. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night. I do have all of the containers washed. They're mostly dry, but I'm just kind of letting them air dry a little bit more. And I do have my plan for everything. Um, like I have my little, my very, very fancy little notes um, just for what everything where everything goes and I already have like my box like the bins planned out as well I do have some of the cans organized already um, so tomorrow I think it's gonna be much quicker I say that now but I really feel like it's going to be much quicker all I have to do is actually put all the items into the bins into the containers um, and then label everything. So we're in the home stretch. Everything's looking so nice. I really, really love the pendant. I feel like it's just added a lot to this space. And also of course, like adding the functional shelving and the bright white, like off white, it just looks so much better. And adding the can organizers, everything is coming together and it's looking really nice and it's gonna be so, so functional. So we are gonna finish this up tomorrow. I'm so happy with the progress we made today. We are on the third and final day of this little project or big project. I don't know. It's like, it's just taking a while. I feel like we definitely could have got it done in two days if 
this was all we had to work on during those few days but of course there's all of other life like our kids need our help with things we just there's always something else that's needing our attention we can't always just devote like a full day to doing something but nevertheless we are on day three and we are getting this done so everything is looking really nice in here i'm like really excited it's just all coming together really well but now we basically just need to put all of the things in the containers put um, like any individual items in the baskets. And then I also get to do labels. You guys know I love doing labels. And that's one of my favorite parts of these makeovers just because I feel like then everything looks really, really uniform. And I'm just, I love that part. So I'm gonna start um, working on the containers and then we'll start putting things into the baskets. One question that I get a lot is how to decide what items to remove from the original container and put into like glass jars or plastic containers, whatever you pick out. And then on the other hand, when to decide to keep things in their original containers. So there are a few things that go into play in my mind whenever I decide to take something out of its original container. And the first thing is, is this an item that I buy often? For example, flour I always have on hand. I always have pancake mix on hand. I always have cereal on hand. And so those would be some items that would be great to take out of their original container and put into something that's a little bit nicer looking and also a little bit easier to organize. Another thing to think about is do you use this item often? So for example, I don't really use cornstarch that often and so it might go out of date before I need to refill it. And so for that reason, I might just end up leaving cornstarch in its original container. But if it's something that I'm always grabbing for and something that's probably not going to expire before I use it all up, then that also can be a factor when deciding whether I'm going to keep it in its original container or transfer it into something new.
All right, the next thing that I wanted to touch on is to focus not only where things fit, but also where they are functional. So for example, if your kids always get their own cereal, then don't put the cereal out of reach of them. Don't put it on the highest shelf. Make sure that you're putting that at eye level for them and make sure you're putting it somewhere where they can reach. And on the other hand, if there's something that you rarely reach for or something that you really don't want front and center, then go ahead and make sure that those items are going to be put in a less accessible space. So whenever you are organizing something, make sure that you are putting function first always and then once you have that taken care of then you can make sure that it looks nice Oh my gosh, I'm loving this so much, so, so much. I'm like so excited. I'm not gonna turn you guys around yet. We only really have to do labels and then we're done. So I'm gonna go ahead and start working on labels and I'll kind of share that process with you guys. And then once I get the labels put on, I will turn you guys around and show you the final reveal. But it is like everything I imagined it would be and more. I love it so much. So let's get to making labels. So to make the labels, of course, I am using my Cricut Maker. You guys know I love my Cricut so much, and I've used it for tons of different things around our house and just different projects for the kids as well. But all I'm doing here is just typing up my list of labels that I want printed. I've already pre-measured everything, so I know exactly what size I want all of the labels. And then once I have all of that figured out, I am just going to take out my vinyl, cut it down to size, and then put it into the machine, and then I can start cutting the labels. This is honestly something that's so fun to do. It's like really impressive to see this machine work. It's always just like fun to watch. But once it was all done cutting, I just went ahead and pulled off any of the excess vinyl, and then I also started weeding it, which just means that I pull out like any of the excess vinyl inside the letters, and I just got all of my pantry labels ready to add on to any of my containers and bins. Now, if you don't have a Cricut or something to do this, you definitely find labels on Amazon or Etsy and in fact before I got my own Cricut I was always ordering these labels from my friend who has an Etsy shop so I will leave a link for those labels down below in case if you don't have a Cricut or something to make your own and I will also have a link to my Cricut machine in case if you've been in the market and want to check one of those out too.
so this is how everything turned out i literally could not love this anymore i love all of the things that we did to this pantry from the paint to the new shelving to the pendant light which i didn't ever really think would be fun to add into a pantry but it absolutely made a big difference in here i love the can shelving for the sides I love all of the containers and the bins. Everything just matches really nice and everything has a spot, which is of course my favorite aspect of this. But it's just been so inspiring to walk into this pantry and everything has its own place and it just makes me wanna cook and prepare things for our family. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it's brought you lots of motivation and also given you some ideas for your own pantry. If you guys enjoy this video and you wanna see more home makeovers, I will leave that playlist right here so you can go ahead and watch those. Thank you so 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 much for being here do not forget to subscribe down below if you are not already and i will see you in my next one bye guys